Yeah. Praise the Lord. I pray that you're doing well. I'm going to speak for a few minutes. Sometimes, yeah, a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, I mean a few minutes. Hallelujah. On the topic again that I've been doing called healing is for you. Healing is for you. Nobody else. Jesus paid the price for you. Hallelujah. Jesus paid it all for you. I know I didn't warn you. I didn't tell you when, but um, hopefully you see this or you see this afterwards. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me wait for you and see. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We bless your holy name, Jesus. We bless your holy name, Master. You are the Lord. We thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Jesus. I bless you. 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 Just, just give me one second. Let me make sure the light is. Hallelujah. The light is on. Um, okay. Anyway. Healing is for you. But I want to address some things. So yesterday, I talked about Jesus touching you and you or me touching Jesus. Hallelujah. You touching Jesus or you, I mean, Jesus touching us or us touching Jesus. Touching Jesus. Um, so a few scriptures here. Remember the guy that sat at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. 38 years. Jesus went to him. The, the, the guy in John 9 who was blind, Jesus went to him. Because he says he did not even know it was Jesus who healed him. And that's all great. Jesus touching. You know, I want that. I want Jesus to come to me and touch me in my bed. But it doesn't work like that all the time. Remember the woman with the issue of the blood. It says, for she said within herself, if I may touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. So she went to Jesus to be touched. She crawled out of whatever, wherever she was hidden to go to Jesus. I pray that you do that today. Don't just wait there. I pray that you do that and let Jesus heal you by you making an effort. Now, of course, it took a lot for that woman that was in pain to go to Jesus. You may be in pain today. You may be laying in bed and you don't think, you don't feel like you, 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 you can go to Jesus and you feel like, you know, people have abandoned you. Listen, people will disappoint you. But you can go to Jesus today. But I want to address one thing. Um, healing. Healing. Number one is through a supernatural manifestation of Jesus. Like that man that sat by the pool of Bethesda. Jesus went to him. Jesus went to him. The blind man in John chapter 9, Jesus went to him. Supernatural manifestation. In, in, we read this in, in John yesterday. We read this um, about, you know, how 
it, it says, when the men of that place, I think in Matthew 14, when the men of that place knew that Jesus was there, they knew that Jesus was there. They started bringing in the sick and Jesus touched the sick. But they took the sick from wherever they were to where Jesus was. For what? For Jesus to heal them. Hallelujah. For Jesus to touch them. Okay, so that's one. By the supernatural touch of God, by the grace of God, by the glory of God, by the awesomeness of God. Because it says what? It rains on the just and on the unjust. It rains. Hallelujah. That's how good God is. God can heal someone that doesn't even believe in him. Someone that doesn't even love him or worship him. God can heal that person. But you'd rather you already love him. I pray that you fall in love today after this broadcast. But I want, I want to talk to you about how, in, and I call it the ministry of man. The ministry of man. Now let me go back. So Jesus can heal you by touching himself, by coming to you. Then Jesus can heal you by you going to him, like the woman, the issue of the blood. The woman, the issue of the blood went to him. She said, if I may touch the hem of his garment. And then we see the scripture says, as many as touched him, they were made whole. <coughs> Excuse me. As many as touched him, they were made whole. But now I want to talk about this other healing. This is healing through the ministry of man. Through the ministry of man. You know, in, um, in 2 Kings chapter 5, there's a story there of Naaman. Naaman. 2 Kings chapter 5, there's a story of a man called Naaman. Naaman, the little girl in his house, said in in um in second king chapter 5 verse 3 he says that she said unto her mistress would god my lord wear with a prophet that is in samaria for he would recover him of his leprosy okay now think about it so this girl that was working there that was um you know history says it was she was a slave or she was a maid or housekeeper she said i wish my boss would go to this man in samaria he would heal him. He would recover him of his leprosy. Obviously, of course, means God will recover him. But the, there, was, there was a man between Naaman's healing. So God is a healer. Naaman was the one sick. There was a middle person there. And this man was a prophet. Hallelujah. So, 2 Kings 5, verse 3. Let's, um, let's all go into it. Now, what am I saying, saints of God? I'm saying there are times when God will use a man. This is called the ministry of man or the helps of man. There are times, I mean, many times, let's say financial. Financial breakthrough, God will use a man. You not just drop millions of dollars from the sky those days are gone the, the days of manna from heaven are gone well just woke up one day and you showered with the millions of dollars in your bed i wish it was like that no but it says man god will call man will cause man to bless you hallelujah there's a man that you, so healing in this time when um neman neman needed to be healed and the only way for Naaman to be healed. So this girl said, would God my Lord wear with a prophet that is Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. Now, we have a culture that does not honor. There is a culture that does not honor others. Oh, uh, I don't have to be to, I don't have to go to them. Really? God told you to go to that man. God called you to go to that church. Oh, God can heal me right here where I am. Really? Why didn't God heal Naaman where he was? Why did he tell Naaman 
to travel to go and get healing. It's just what it is. I don't know how far, you know, I've not really studied how far where Neman was to Samaria. I can guess it was some journey. And Neman went. Um, so anyway, it, it says here in verse 8, and it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, he was informed that, hey, um, I got this guy that need to be healed. Now, let me go to verse 9. So Naaman came with his horses, with his chariot, and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. He was seeking healing. He had a problem. He had to go to a man that that little prophet girl told her told him he had to go to a man there are times when you have to go to a church to be healed to a woman to be healed to a man to be healed but name in, in um elisha's elisha where was i verse nine he went with his chariots and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash. Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Hold, hold on. Hmm. So this man, that uh, the little prophetess told the boss to go to, now this man, sent another man to tell Elisha, uh, to tell Naaman what to do. The ministry of man. You see, in verse 11, Naaman was upset. Why? Because he was expecting the big man, the prophet himself, to come out, to heal him. <laughs> uh, you know, Think about certain things. <laughs> huh? You, God tells you to go and see who, let's say, a great man of God. Let's say God told you to go and see Pastor Benny, to go and see Bob Rogers, Dr. Bob Rogers, my father. And uh, you arrive there, you travel, maybe you, you take a flight. You arrive there, and the man could not see you. And the man sends little guy, like me, who you don't even know, send some man that you didn't even know was there. And that man gives you instructions. This guy was upset. This is called the ministry of man. Healing through the ministry of man. But look, value the, the, the gifts of God. I'm reminded of a story when um, one of my fathers in faith that I never met, but I've read his books, I've listened to him several times. Derek Prince. He had, lep he had uh, cancer. And a minister from, uh, uh, what's the name? What's the name of the church again? Uh, Seventh-day Adventist came. This guy was a student. He was studying to be a, a minister in the Seventh-day Adventist church. Well, uh, Derek Prince, like what, this guy doesn't speak in tongues, doesn't speak, and he's young, like, pff, what can he do? So anyway, the man, asked if you could pray for him and he said oh yeah go ahead but in his head this won't work and you know that guy god used that guy to heal him over the cancer it's called the ministry of man the ministry of man um in uh i think it's luke 19 where um, uh peter 
Peter was called. Peter was called. Why? Because they had a situation in Luke in only Acts 9. Acts 9. This, uh, let's start from verse 38 and then we'll, we'll pray here in a little bit of chapter 9. What is this called? The ministry of man. That's what this is called. Let's start from verse 38 in Acts chapter 9, verse 38. And for as much as Lydia was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there. Who heard the disciples was there? Uh, they sent unto him two men desiring that he would not delay to come to them. Verse 39. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him unto the upper chamber. And all the widows stood by him, weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. Verse 10. But Peter put them, put them all forth, put them all forth and knelt down and prayed and turning unto, turning him, turning him to the body, said, Tabitha, arise. She opened her eyes. When she saw Peter, she sat up. When he gave her his hand and lifted her up, and when he had called the saints and widows presented her alive, <laughs> the ministry of man, very, very important, the ministry of man, do not despise it. Okay, look, and I'll be closing in the next four minutes. These are disciples. As the ministers of God, please call for help. Don't sit there and think you are all powerful and that's all there is, is you. And you've been praying for that person for 15 years. The person is still sick. Call somebody. You've been believing God and you are ashamed because you think that's a failure and that the failure is a, is a reflective of you. No, call somebody. Look, these were disciples in that place. They heard that Peter was coming. Sometimes just acknowledge that there are people that have a grace to do certain things that you cannot do. Oh, somebody. Hallelujah. The ministry and the helps of man. Look, it says, send help from the sanctuary. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Psalms 20 verse 2. May he send you help from the sanctuary. May God send you help. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. All this is the ministry of man. The ministry of man. Yes, it's God working but it involves a man or a woman. It, when I say man, I mean mankind. It involves a human being. Don't be cocky. Don't be foolish about some things. Call somebody. That person that is sick in your church maybe needs another grace. Don't sit there and let them be sick because of your ignorance. No. I call people. There are times in deliverance when you're praying for somebody, and I sense that I need help, I'll call somebody on the phone. I'll call them and they'll be on the phone. There's a day we are praying and I called, um, I called Clarissa. We called Clarissa in Maryland. And when, when, you, when you said, let's call Clarissa, the demon in the person said, oh no, don't call her. Call for help. Precious Jesus. I give you praise. Father, I speak to that woman, to that man that needs the help of man. Father, I know you can touch them. I know they can touch you. 
but in any circumstances where they need the help of man, I pray that you touch them. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every sickness and disease. I rebuke infirmities out of your body. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I break that power now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. This, this has blessed you. Share it with somebody. You know, our ministry staff is there. Connect. Connect. Sow your seeds. Connect to a ministry that is bringing the undiluted word of God. Connect. Go on that site and share it with somebody.